Hi. Welcome to this video. We will review sarcoidosis. Let's begin. Sarcoidosis is a multisystem granulomatous disorder characterized by the presence of non caseating granulomas. Its etiology is unknown. Clinical features Sarcoidosis can involve any organ, but over 90% of cases affect the lungs. Sarcoidosis can be an accidental finding and is sometimes discovered as bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy on a chest X-ray done for some other purpose in an otherwise asymptomatic person. Pulmonary disease may also present in a more insidious manner with cough, exertional breathlessness, and radiographic infiltrate. Chest auscultation is often surprisingly unremarkable. Fibrosis occurs in around 20% of cases of pulmonary sarcoidosis and may cause a silent loss of lung function. Clinical features of sarcoidosis in other organs are also many. These include lymphadenopathy, hepatomegaly, splenomegaly, uveitis, conjunctivitis, keratoconjunctivitis sicca, glaucoma, terminal phalangeal bone cysts, enlargement of lacrimal and parotid glands, Bell's palsy, neuropathy, meningitis, brainstem and spinal syndromes, space-occupying lesion, erythema nodosum, lupus perneo, subcutaneous nodules, hypercalcemia, hypercalciuria, renal stones, and pituitary dysfunction. Infiltrating granulomas in heart may cause complete AV block, ventricular or supraventricular tachycardia, myocarditis, congestive cardiac failure, restrictive cardiomyopathy. Sarcoidosis can also present with an acute illness, especially in young women, characterized by erythema nodosum, peripheral arthropathy, uveitis, bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy, lethargy, and occasionally fever. This constellation of symptoms and signs is called Lofgren's syndrome. Investigations Lymphopenia is characteristic. Liver function tests may be mildly deranged. Hypercalcemia may be present, which is due to the increased formation of calcitriol by alveolar macrophages, particularly if the patient has been exposed to strong sunlight. Hypercalciuria may also be seen and may lead to nephrocalcinosis. Serum angiotensin converting enzyme may provide a nonspecific marker of disease activity and can assist in monitoring the clinical course. Chest radiography has been used to stage sarcoid. A normal chest radiograph is stage 0. Hilar or mediastinal nodal enlargement only is stage 1. Nodal enlargement along with parenchymal disease is stage 2. The parenchymal disease only, without any lymphadenopathy on chest x-ray is stage 3. And in stage 4, there is pulmonary fibrosis. In patients with pulmonary infiltrates, pulmonary function testing may show a restrictive defect, accompanied by impaired gas exchange. Exercise tests may reveal oxygen desaturation. Bronchoscopy Bronchoscopy may demonstrate a cobblestone appearance of the mucosa. Bronchial and transbronchial biopsies usually show non-caseating granulomas. Bronchoalveolar lavage fluid typically contains an increased CD4 to CD8 T-cell ratio. Characteristic HRCT appearances include reticulonodular opacities that follow a perilymphatic distribution, centered on bronchovascular bundles and the subpleural areas. PET scanning can detect extrapulmonary disease. MRI brain may be useful in diagnosing neurosacrocoidosis. Making a diagnosis. The occurrence of erythema nodosum with bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy on chest X-ray is often sufficient for a confident diagnosis without a need for tissue biopsy. Similarly, a typical presentation with classical HRCT features may also be accepted to diagnose sarcoidosis. In other instances, however, the diagnosis should be confirmed by histological examination of the involved organ. The presence of energy, for example to tuberculin skin tests, may support the diagnosis. Management of sarcoidosis Patients with bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy alone does not need treatment as most recover spontaneously. 
acute sarcoidosis or Lofgren syndrome is managed with bed rest and NSAIDs. Rarely, few patients may need a short course of steroids. Indications for corticosteroids include parenchymal lung disease, whether symptomatic, static, or progressive, uveitis, hypercalcemia, and neurological or cardiac involvement. Prednisolone in a dose of 40 mg per day orally is given for 4 to 6 weeks. Then the dose is reduced over one year according to the clinical status. A few patients relapse and may need a further course or long-term therapy. In severe illness, intravenous methylprednisolone or immunosuppressants such as methotrexate, cyclosporin or cyclophosphamide may be needed. Anti-TNF-alpha therapy may be tried in refractory cases. For cutaneous sarcoid with limited pulmonary involvement, chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine, and low-dose thalidomide may be useful. Topical glucocorticoids may be used in mild uveitis. Inhaled glucocorticoids have been used to shorten the duration of systemic glucocorticoid use in asymptomatic parenchymal sarcoid. Patients should be educated to avoid strong sunlight as it may precipitate hypercalcemia and affect renal function. Poor prognostic factors. Age over 40, Afro-Caribbean ethnicity, persistent symptoms for more than six months, the involvement of more than three organs, lupus perneo, and a stage three or four chest X-ray are poor prognostic factors. 60% of patients with thoracic sarcoidosis resolve over two years. The overall mortality is low and usually occurs due to cardiac involvement or pulmonary fibrosis. And this is it for this video. Please share it with your colleagues if you found this video useful.